Example one: We are asked to express each entire radical as a mixed radical in simplest form. So another way that we may be asked to do this is we may be asked to just simplify each radical. Now, you know from Math 10 that if we want to simplify the root of 75, what we want to do is get the smallest possible number underneath the radical sign. So what you have to do is rewrite the square root of 75. And here's where you have to know your perfect square numbers that I have highlighted here in yellow. You say to yourself, what is the largest of these perfect square numbers? What's the largest of these yellow numbers that divides evenly into 75? So, you know, if we started at the bottom, 125 is too big. It's bigger than 75, so it's not going to go into there. 100 is too big. 81 is too big. 64 does not divide into 75. 49 does not go evenly into 75. Neither does 36, but 25 does. So what we're going to do is we go back here and we rewrite the square root of 75 as being... 25 times 3. 25 times 3 is what gives us 75. Now, I always tell students to underline the 25. Underline the perfect square number that you picked from the list. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to rewrite or you're going to evaluate what the square root of 25 is. What is the square root of 25? Well, the square root of 25 is just 5. 5, and then that 3, the square root of 3 is an irrational number. It doesn't work out evenly, so we just leave the 3 as the radicand. Now, you can do an extra step in here. It's not required, but maybe it will help some of you. You could take and rewrite this as being the square root of 25 times the extra square root of 3. And from there then, what is the square root of 25? That's just 5, but the square root of 3 doesn't work out evenly. So if you like that extra step, certainly you can go ahead and do that. Now, in B, if you look at B, we've got negative 2 times the square root of 18. This is already a mixed radical. Okay, so this is already a mixed radical. You do have a number out front, but the problem is it's not simplified. It's not simplified, and we would not accept an unsimplified radical as a final answer. Mathematicians want the smallest possible number underneath the radical sign. We want the smallest possible radicand. So we will leave the negative 2 in front and we will rewrite 18. What is the largest possible perfect square number that divides evenly into 18? So our perfect square numbers, well, 1 divides in there, but 1 is honestly kind of useless. Our next perfect square number is 4. 4 doesn't go in there. 9 does. So 9 is a possibility. What would the next one be? 16? No, that's not going to go in. And 25 is too big. So we will rewrite 18 as being 9 times 2. Underline the perfect square number. Because what you're now going to do is you're going to evaluate the square root of 9. What is the square root of 9? That is a 3. So the square root of 9 comes out as a 3 and it multiplies by the coefficient that was already there. So you are going to now get 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. And then this 2, when we had the 9 times 2 underneath the square root sign, the square root of 2 just stays as root 2. Again, if you wanted that extra step, it would look like this. The negative 2 is out front, 
you could rewrite this as a root 9 and then the extra root 2. You would now take negative 2 times what's the square root of 9? That's just a 3 times the root of 2. I don't know what that is. It's an irrational number. It's a yucky decimal. So this then would become negative 2 times 3, which is negative 6. And the root 2 just stays as root 2. Now let's look at C. C is a little bit more complicated. First of all, because you have a cube root there. Oh my goodness, that creates problems for students because they often miss that. Now, a couple of things. The negative can either apply to the top or the bottom, but not both. So I usually like to put the negative in the top. When you have the cube root or the square root or any kind of a root of a fraction, we can rewrite this as cube root of the top, which I'm going to say is the negative 27, over cube root of the bottom, which is 24. So I've broken up that fraction into two radicals, cube root of the top over cube root or cube root of the bottom. Now, the top, the cube root of negative 27, that works out evenly. It works out evenly because I can say to myself, what number, when multiplied by itself three times, gives me negative 27? Well, that's got to be negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and evaluate the top. Okay, and the reason I was able to do that is, I'll just put a little note here, negative 27 is a perfect cube number. However, in the denominator, the cube root of 24 is, it doesn't work out evenly, it would be a decimal, and it's not simplified. I want to try to get a smaller number than 24 underneath the radical sign. So be careful here. You're going to go back and ask yourself, not what is the largest possible perfect square number. I'm not looking at the yellow numbers, but I'm going to say, what's the largest possible perfect cube number? that goes evenly into 24. So 1 goes into 24, but that doesn't really count. 8 goes into 24. 27 is too big. So 8 is the largest possible perfect cube number that divides evenly into 24. So I'm going to rewrite this as the cube root of 24 can be broken down into 8 times 3. I underline the number that I chose from my list, the perfect cube number. So now that negative 3 stays on the top. You're going to evaluate the cube root of the number you underlined. What is the cube root of 8? What number, when you multiply it by itself three times, gives me 8? Well, the cube root of 8 is 2. And then that extra number, that 3 underneath there, the cube root of 3 doesn't work out evenly, so I leave that as the cube root of 3. And that would be our simplified form. Again, if you wanted to have an extra step, you could write this as negative 3 over. You could write cube root of 8 and then the extra cube root of 3. So then you have the negative 3 on the top, the cube root of 8 you evaluate to be a 2, but then cube root of 3 just stays there.